it has been pointed out to me in one of my previous videos. I issued an appointment to all the farts of the world that I uh, compared them to Michael Gove, you see. Now, it has been pointed out that um, farts don't have limbic systems and therefore cannot feel distress at things like this, you see. Which to me is a bit of a technicality, because I think good manners are good manners. Anyway, somebody did point out to me that Michael Gove has a limbic system, which I very much doubt. However, they also pointed out to me that he actually has parents, you see. Now, I always believed, you see, that Michael Gove was one of those meerkats that sells insurance that some monstrous scientist had taken, shaved off all his fur and put a couple of glass with a pair of spectacles on him, you know, and then sent him out in the world in a suit telling him to, you know, generally destroy humanity. Anyway, but I was put right on this by my friend who explained to me that Michael Gove does indeed have parents, you see. Here's a picture. Anyway, so I do acknowledge that if Michael Gove has parents and if they have limbic systems, they may well have been distressed that I would compare their son to uh, farts. And so I would like to issue an apology to Michael Gove's parents. But I would like to make it very clear this is a local apology for local parents. And there's nothing for you here. I've noticed in, in life currently, there are lots of very unhelpful signs, you know, put up by very officious people who think they're being clever and helpful, but actually being a right pain in the bum hole. For example, you see, we have a local secondary school, you know, that's uh, local to us, you know. Anyway, I was walking past it the other day, and I noticed they had a very, very unhelpful sign, uh, you know, near the entrance, you see. And it, it was offering advice to the, to the students of the school how not to cycle, you see. Now, apparently, uh, on this sign, you see, is a, is a stick man on a bicycle carrying a big red circle with a line through it, you know. And underneath it says, no cycling this way. Now, I don't know about you, you know, but <clears throat> I've never seen anybody cycling, carrying a big red circle with a line through it, you know. I mean, you wouldn't do that. You'd fall off your bicycle. You know, people aren't stupid, you know. I mean, you know, why don't they just put no cycling this way with a stick man on a bicycle carrying a, you know, a Challenger tank or something? You know, nobody would be silly enough to do that either. It's just, you know, the nanny state's out of control, in my opinion. Between us, Barbara and I have uh, four children, you see. Two of them were hers originally and two were mine originally, you see. Because we got married when we were a bit older, you know. Second time round. Anyway. <clears throat> the eldest is, is Christina. Chris, you see. And then the second daughter is uh, Felicity. Fliss. And then there's the boy, uh, Briss. And then there's the third daughter, who doesn't rhyme and whose name I can't quite remember. Anyway, the other day I saw her sitting in the house, you see, and in her hands, rather than having a smartphone, which is a bloody miracle, she was holding one of these things, you see. It's a book. And I thought, that's interesting. Anyway, later on I, I found it, you see, I picked it up. <clears throat> and it sounds very good, you know. 
and on the back it says, This is the story of what happens when 14 kids are trapped inside a superstore in the town of Monument. Inside, they have everything they could ever need. And with no adult supervision, they can do whatever they want. Sounds like fun? Question mark. It is. Until they find out that the world outside is being destroyed, you see. So I thought this sounded very, very interesting, you see. So I sought her out and said, Oi, one that doesn't rhyme, come here. She came to me and I said, look, this book, you see this one, sounds very interesting. I've read the blurb on the back. And um, I want to ask you about it, you know. Anyway, she started banging on about the plot until the point at which I fell asleep. And I said, no, 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 no. I was interested in the superstore, you see, because I enjoy superstores, you know. I want to know if it's got a good, you know, ice cream section. Do they do Polish? What's the cat food like? Are they like that other superstore in England that employs dwarfs where every little person helps? You know. I want details. Anyway, she couldn't give me any. I thought, what a bloody waste of an education, if you ask me. The other day, I was with Nobby Nibbler, what's his real name, in his shed, you see, and he was doing some DIY, you know, or something, fiddling about with his vice. He's got a lot of vices. And, um, some sort of bits of wood and stuff, and he was, I don't know what he's piddling about it. Anyway, but I was sat there reading the newspaper, which seems to me a much better idea than fanning around with bits of wood. Anyhow, I, I, was, I heard this, this exclamation from over in his direction, you see, and he shouted out, Pissing hell! And I said, No, 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 that's wrong, you see. Because if you piss in hell, you might put the fire out. And he said, no, no, no. My bladder isn't big enough, you see, to dampen down the conflagration, you see. And I said, well, you never know, you know. If you've had a skinful the night before, you might have a big and large bladder, you see. And you might have a moment of, you know, instantaneous incontinence. And the tidal wave of your urine might, you know, indeed, you know, put hell out of action. In which case, Satan would be absolutely, you know, having apoplexy. And he said, that's true, he said. He said, there'd be hell to pay. I said, yes. And think about the litigation, you know. I said, the devil's in the detail. 